Hello there, this is Al24 News live from Algiers, coming up next in our news program. Syrian state media said Zionist entity airstrike in Syria killed two people and wounded seven others, including six soldiers. Today, Wednesday, is the fourth Zionist entity attack reported by Syria this month. Plus. Australia names Hezbollah as a terrorist group. And finally, COVID wraps America, Europe, Africa, Australia and World Health Organization warning death toll to increase protests in French overseas territories in the Caribbean opposing measures to limit the spread of COVID-19. And in Germany, inside incidence rate hits 400 for first time. Hello again and welcome. First in our top story, Zionist entity airstrike in Syria killed two people and wounded seven others, including six soldiers today, Wednesday. Syrian state media said it is the fourth Zionist entity attack reported by Syria this month. Two civilians were killed while another sustained serious injury. Sanai reported adding six Syrian soldiers were also injured in the attack. Australia has classified 26 groups as a terrorist group organization, including the so-called ISIL, ISIS, Boko Haram, Abu Sayyaf, and Lebanon-based Shia group Hezbollah, which the latter has been on the list since 2003. Moreover, the United States called on government globally to take the plunge against Hezbollah, in which these calls were already responded by the major, major powers, including the United Kingdom and Canada. According to Home Affairs Minister Karen Anders, said in a statement that the government has zero tolerance for violence and there aren't any reason whatsoever that can justify killing innocent people. And now, moving on to another story, the Saudi-led coalition said today, Wednesday, it is launching airstrikes on legitimate military targets in Yemen, capital Sanai, and asking civilians not to gather around or approach the targeted areas. Let's follow this report. The Saudi-led coalition engaged in Yemen said on Wednesday it launched airstrikes on Houthi drone sites in the capital Sana'a, days after earlier targeting the Iran-aligned movement's missile capabilities. The bombarded factory that produces plastic materials is claimed to be used as a secret factory for drones. It is situated near a major hospital and around two kilometers south of Houthi-controlled Sana'a International Airport. The alliance urged civilians to stay clear of areas with legitimate military targets. Houthi Ran Al Masira TV said on Twitter that two civilians were killed and another two injured in a strike on the building, which the channel said was part of a Yatim hospital in Muayin district. Saudi Arabia has injured more than 240 attacks from the Houthis this year. On Saturday, 14 armed drones targeted multiple Saudi cities. <laughs> With the help of God and in response to the aggression and its continuous crime, our armed forces carried out the operation of a balance of power by striking a number of pivotal military targets that belong to Saudi enemy, as follows. Targeting King Khalid base in Riyadh with four drones with the model Samad 3. Striking military targets in King Abdullah International Airport in Jeddah. As well as targeting Aramco facilities in Jeddah with four drones with a model Samad 2. Striking different military targets in the areas of Abba, Jizan, and Narjan with five drones. A total of 14 drones were used in the operation. The war, which has killed tens of thousands of people and caused a dire humanitarian crisis, has been in military stalemate for years. The Houthis are pressing an offensive in Marib, the internationally recognized government's last northern stronghold, as well as in other areas in Yemen, claiming that they are fighting a corrupt system and foreign aggression. COVID wraps America, Europe, Africa and Australia, while the World Health Organization warnings that told to increase protesters in French overseas territories in the Caribbean opposing measures to limit the spread of COVID-19 in Germany. In since rate hits 400 for the first time. Let's follow this report. 
The WHO predicts 700,000 additional COVID deaths across Europe by March. The coronavirus pandemic in Europe is in the firm grip. If current trends continue, the continent's death toll might reach 2.2 million this winter. Between now and March, the first 2022, it expects significant or exceptional stress in ICUs. In the United States, COVID-19 has killed more individuals this year than it did the year before vaccinations were introduced. Experts attribute the outbreak to a number of factors, including low vaccination rates and the spread of the highly dangerous Delta variant. On November 22, 2021, Africa accounts for only 3.35% of the global COVID-19 infections. Scientists say Africa is doing better than Europe and the U.S. in fighting the disease despite the lack of vaccines. Wafa al Sadr, chair of global health at Columbia University, says there is something mysterious going on in Africa that is puzzling scientists. The number of coronavirus deaths in Germany is currently little under 99,000, but 300 individuals die from COVID every day. The weekly infection rate in Germany has reached an all-time high rate of about 399 new infections per 100,000 individuals. Well, I, I agree that the situation is serious right now. We have uh, the highest numbers of uh, COVID-19 cases in Germany than we ever had during the pandemic. And at the same time, we had eased uh, some of the restriction and measures we had had in place. So um, we, we have the warnings from the intensive care uh, physicians, and this is something we have to take serious. New Zealand has announced it will reopen its borders for the first time since the lockdown in the first month of the COVID-19 pandemic to vaccinated visitors in the beginning of 2022. The country's borders have been closed for more than a year and a half. Demonstrators in French overseas territories in the Caribbean opposing measures to curb the spread of COVID-19 clashed with the security forces on Tuesday. French authorities have extended the curfew imposed on Guadeloupe until November 28. Une petite minorité violente. It's a small violent minority that robs stores, blocks roads, holds motorists for ransom, prevents sick people from accessing sometimes vital care, and even shoots at law enforcement. I condemn these acts of violence in the strongest possible terms. The United Nations nuclear inspectors ended talks with Iran's top diplomat that stopped short of fully resolving concerns over access to sensitive atomic sites and could weigh on the Islamic Republic's negotiations with world powers that resume next week. Iranian Foreign Minister Hussein Amir Abdullahian and Director General Rafael Mariano Grossi vowed to cooperate in resolving technical issues in the coming months, according to a statement from Iran's Foreign Ministry following their meeting in Tehran Tuesday. Beijing condemns U.S. guided missile destroyer sailing through Taiwan straight today on Tuesday in a statement by Chinese Foreign Affairs spokesperson. U.S. responded stating that the destroyer sailed in international waters in accordance with international law. Hassan Berkan reports. Beijing condemned U.S. warships sailing through Taiwan Strait today Tuesday in a statement by Chinese Foreign Affairs spokesperson. Zhao Lijian added that China is firmly resolved in upholding national sovereignty and territorial integrity. The Chinese side was closely following and fully aware of the U.S. military vessel's passage through the Taiwan Strait. The U.S. warships have repeatedly flexed muscles, made provocations, and stirred up trouble in the Taiwan Strait in the name of freedom of navigation. This is by no means commitment to freedom and openness, but rather deliberate disruption and sabotage of regional peace and stability. The international community sees this plainly. China is firmly resolved in upholding national sovereignty and territorial integrity. The U.S. side should immediately correct its mistakes, stop making provocations, challenging the bottom line and playing with fire, and play a more constructive role in regional peace and stability. The U.S. Navy said a right Berkey-class guided missile destroyer Melis conducted the routine Taiwan Street transit through international water in accordance with international law, and that the ship's transit through the Taiwan Street demonstrates the U.S. commitment to free and open Indo-Pacific. 
The United States military flies, sails, and operates anywhere international law allows. This comes a week after the virtual summit between the President of the United States, Joe Biden, and Xi Jinping, the President of People's Republic of China. As leaders of China and the United States, the survivors of a bus inferno that killed at least 46 people scrambled to safety through a window after the vehicle caught fire and crashed in Bulgaria. Seven people escaped with burns from the vehicle, which was packed with tourists who were mostly Macedonian. The bus slammed into a barrier and went up in flames while returning from Istanbul in Turkey to North Macedonia. Twelve children were among the dead, including twin boys aged four. Only four men and three women survived the disaster, which happened on a motorway southwest of the Bulgarian capital, Sofia, early on Tuesday. In the midst of the geopolitical confrontation unraveling at the Belarus-Poland border, the European Commission has unveiled new plans to punish transport companies that aid and abet the smuggling and trafficking of people. Nebi Khazidi reports. The European Commission has unveiled new plans to deter transport companies that aid and abet the smuggling and trafficking of people. The recent events at the EU's borders with Belarus where migrants flooded massively could not have taken place without certain transport operators contributing to the exploitation of migrants. Now, under the new rules, Brussels will be able to directly target commercial operators that are taking an active part in the smuggling of migrants and those that counsel the commission of such crime. The Commission will have to gather evidence to back its claims and give the company an opportunity to respond to the accusations. Blacklisting will be done through the suspension of one or several rights across EU territory, such as the right to provide transport services, to fly and transit, to refuel, to call into ports and to carry out maintenance. Brussels will also be able to withdraw licenses and authorizations and to limit transport operations anywhere in the European Union. The EU would also stand in solidarity with EU member states affected by the crisis, as 3.5 million euros will be spent for voluntary returns, 700,000 euros for humanitarian assistance, as well as an extra 200 million euros for border management in Latvia, Lithuania and Poland, which will prevent the construction of barbed wires and long-way walls. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres is visiting Colombia as the South American nation, ready is to mark the fifth anniversary of a fragile peace agreement reached between the government and what was once the country's uh, go the government of Colombia and members of the FARC signed to end a nearly six decades long armed conflict that displaced millions and left more than 260,000 people dead. Turkey is living a severe crisis of inflation has hiked the unprecedented level. Turkish economy relies on import of energy and raw material and their price rise caused an economic issue for Erdogan's government, which has severe opposition. Ayadi Usama reports. Following the last inflation crisis that most of the world's countries are living, including China, the USA and the UK, Turkey's economy is taking the same stream as inflation rates in the country are increasingly soaring. Turkish lira has fallen by nearly a quarter this year compared to previous years, which makes Erdogan's mission in rising the Turkish economy more difficult. The lira fall reached 19% on Tuesday, which is unprecedented in Turkey's history. Analysts warn that Erdogan's policy carries major risks on the financial system of the country and broader economy. Rajab Tayyip Erdogan defended the interest rate cuts of banks vowing to win an economic war of independence. According to the Turkish Statistical Institute, annual inflation rates stood to almost 20% in October, as prices hike is already at its highest reach. Raw material and energy are the reliable sources of import in Turkey, which makes the economic collapse in the country closer, in addition to currency fall down, which is glaring. Inflation rates would not keep in the same tempo, as predictions reveal that it can reach 25 to 30 percent over the next month or two. Opposition of the Turkish president Recep Tayyip Erdogan criticized the president's will to expel ambassadors at 10 Western allies arguing that it might have an economic impact, while diplomats hoped that he would avert the decision.
Post-pandemic economic issues are in continual complications as oil prices in the world are climbing in international markets after the U.S. and other consuming nations fell short of releasing tons of millions of barrels of oil from reserve in an attempt to cool down the market and decline the prices. OPEC Plus announced the well of the reassessment of crude output as the prices settled up to 1% as stated by OPEC plus officials as they will tailor strategies to increase production if oil producers agree to release crude from their reserves. U.S. President Joe Biden announced that he has ordered the use of 50 million barrels of U.S. strategic oil reserves in coordinated effort with other countries to moderate rising fuel prices. The quantity will be released in parallel with other energy-consuming countries. Hussein Berkin reports. So today I'm announcing that the largest ever release from the U.S. Strategic Petroleum Reserve U.S. President Joe Biden announced the release of 15 million barrels of strategic oil reserves for the United States as part of the ongoing efforts to reduce fuel prices and solve the shortage of fuel supplies around the world. The statement indicates that Biden had recently worked with other countries to solve the crisis of the shortage of hydrocarbons, with the world recovering from the corona pandemic, noting that these diplomatic efforts resulted in Washington's decision to release oil barrels in parallel with similar steps by some major energy-consuming nations, including India, Japan, the United Kingdom, and China. So today I'm announcing that the largest ever release from the U.S. Strategic Petroleum Reserve to help provide the supply we need as we recover from this pandemic. In addition, I brought together other nations to contribute to the solution, India, Japan, the Republic of Korea and the United Kingdom have agreed to release additional oil from their reserves, and China may do more as well. This coordinated action will help us deal with a lack of supply, which in turn helps ease prices. Prices of oil rose more than 1% on Monday as a result of reports that the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries, Russia and their allies called OPEC+, Plus, may adjust their plans to increase oil production if major consuming nations release crude from their reserves or if the pandemic reduces demand. OPEC Plus will meet in about a week to decide whether to increase or decrease production, a strategy the group often uses to boost prices. Mexican President Andres Manuel Lopez defended his government's decision to accelerate clearance of key infrastructure projects that are critical to the country's security. Despite the criticism, President Andres Manuel Lopez supported the government, stating that they plan to speed up the infrastructure projects to reduce bureaucracy. Critics suggest that this move would make spending on public works less transparent. Lopez defended the bill, claiming or claiming that it would improve internal collaboration and that the federal administration was led by justice and honesty. According to an Apple lawsuit, an SO group is accused of deploying its Pegasus spyware to hack devices and assist human rights violations. Apple has launched a lawsuit in the United States against Zionist entities firm NSO Group placing a blame of hacking Apple users' iPhones with its Pegasus malware. More details with Islam Seed. In a legal step complaint filed in the U.S. federal court on Tuesday, Apple called NSO a moral 21st century mercenaries who have used cyber surveillance technology to violate human rights and have exploited Apple's products. An investigation by international media networks exposed that Pegasus, which is used by security forces and governments, was utilized against people including six Palestinian human rights activists and one U.S. citizen. On the other side, the court commands to ban NSO from using Apple servers and devices and to force the company to delete previously hacked data. Greg Federighi, Apple's senior vice president of software engineering, said in a statement that the NSO group spent millions of dollars on sophisticated surveillance technologies without effective accountability, and this has to be changed for good. In another context, the director of Toronto University Citizen Lab has already criticized the act, emphasizing that the NSO is targeting device vulnerabilities and privacy, which is deemed a violation of human rights. 2021 and determined that their iPhone had been hacked with 
NSO Group's Pegasus spyware. NSO Group is a mercenary surveillance company based in Israel. Apple released a fix that it claims will safeguard consumers against vulnerabilities used by NSO before. In addition, the lawsuit's potential damages of $10 million will be donated to organizations that fight to expose cyber surveillance behavior. It's worth noting that the Biden administration imposed mandatory sanctions against NSO Group earlier this month for supporting transnational repression. And finally, one of the most compelling and conflicted characters of Marvel movies comes to the big screen as Oscar winner Jared Leto transforms into the enigmatic anti-hero Michael Morbis, dangerously ill with a rare blood disorder and determined to save others suffering his same fate. Abdurrahim Kashur will tell us more if Morbis is a hero or a villain. You need a doctor? I am a doctor. Dr. Michael Morbius first debuted in Amazing Spider-Man number 101, exactly 50 years ago. Back in 1971, the comics called censorship, rule losing up, his allowed vampire and the other masters to appear in the comics again. Morbius will be played by Jerry Little in the upcoming movie and it likely will lean toward the bizarre. But Morbius, comic book history is undoubtedly stranger than anything Hollywood can conjure up. I'm just curious, Dr. Michael Morbius at your service. But how does Morbius become a vampire? Well, feeling like this was his last chance. Dr. Morbius performed an experiment using electricity and vampire bat DNA. Consume blood. Michael. Results of these efforts turned him into a pseudo vampire. And then he killed his best friend and jumped ship. But because he did not gain his abilities via supernatural means. It meant that he wasn't a true blue, Nosferatu. You save lives, you don't take them. Morbius does not have to drink blood to survive, like a regular vampire would, and Morbius' power resembles those of typical vampires. Morbius can fly, he has super strength, and has some psionic abilities, like hypnotism, but the similarities ended there. Morbius, the living vampire can go into sun, albeit with less power, such as aversion to the religious iconography. What did you do to yourself, Doctor? I wish I knew. At the end, before anti-hero good guys vampires were all the rage, Marvel Comics beat nearly everyone else to the punch with Morbius. A living vampire he is neither true hero nor villain. In some form of bat radar. What else can I do? And now it's time to have a reminder of our main top stories. Syrian state media said Zionist entity airstrike in Syria killed two people and wounded seven others, including six soldiers, today, Wednesday. Australia names Hezbollah as a terrorist group. And COVID wraps America, Europe, Africa and Australia. World Health Organization warnings the toll to increase protesters in French overseas territories in the Caribbean opposing measures to limit the spread of COVID-19 and Germany cases rate hits 400 for first time. That's all for this half hour. The news continues on Al24 News. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.